that I also know how to cover up. Now, now I want you to know that, that this is really important. I need you for the next 15 minutes. Because I, I recognize that without the Holy Spirit, you try to do the work on your own. Can I share something with you? Every now and then, I know some people in here, you can do this on your own, but I can't. I love to do my own here. <laughs> Don't be funny. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, every time, not sometimes, every time that I cut my own hair or my beard in the whole nine, I walk out, get dressed, get ready to leave. There's always a voice that says, come here, come here. Come here and checks. And she always says, honey, you missed a spot. Henry, where are you? Honey, you missed a spot. I declare when you wake up in the morning and you, and you set your day and you think you got it made and you say, today I will not curse. Today I will not do so. So by the end of the day, you'll figure out you've missed a spot. You missed a spot. So what I did this morning is I shaved this side of my face. Tori, can I get your hand? Mom, uh, Wendy, it's okay. Just feel, feel that. Nice and smooth, right? Ow. <laughs> feel this side. Feel that side. A little scruff. You don't have to say it. All right. She says it's a little scru scruffy. It's rough. I need you to understand that I only shaved this side of my face so those who saw this side knew this side. you this way. What's, what's your name? Enoch. Enoch. Enoch? All right, you're too holy. All right, if I take... No, no. <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> My brother said I'm still learning. If I shave the side of my face and I talk to you this way, you would say the brother got to eat shaved. But if I turn this way, you see the other... Come on now. You see prepared. On this side, you see unprepared. Are you with me so far? You see, you see, I'm looking like I'm shaved, but if, you, if you're shaved, but not fully shaved, you're still not shaved. So my problem is, I decided that I'm going to let the person who knows how to shave, shave me. Y'all not hearing me yet. It's important to understand that too often, we keep acting like the Holy Spirit. We keep trying to change. We keep trying to do service without the Holy Spirit. And what God is simply saying is, you can't do this thing on your own. You keep messing up. You keep falling. Your letters are backwards. Your spiritual dis 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 that's the word. So sometimes we need to just pause and let the Holy and sit down and stop trying. We need to sit down and allow the Holy... Now, we, your wife always say he's not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but let the barber do the work. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. God never asks you to bust your behind trying to do it right. He says, fall back, and I got you the rest of the way. <laughs> Living letters. The problem with living letters is when you try to act your way and do your own thing, you start adding on to what God has given. That's why our service is minimal. That's why we can't do the work of the Holy Spirit because we're too trying to do the work of Paul Graham. So we sit down, right? The first thing he's going to do, the first thing he's going to do, he's going he's gonna to cover me. Are you with me so far? I, I, want, I want you to understand, first of all, I need you to understand that I'm not shaved yet, but I'm covered. You recognize it. In other words, I had to come to the shop as I was. If I was already shaved, there's no need for me to go to the bar. And I recognize that in your own work, it will never be done right. So, so what God is telling us, I need you to bring your sin, sick, messed up self to me. Don't try to get it right before you come to me. I need you messed up so I know how to clean you. You ever had a car, listen, Elder Gordon, you ever had a car that was messed up and when you brought it to the mechanic, it sounded good? 
I don't hear nothing, but I heard it driving here. That's the same way you hope things turn out when you get to church. You've been flat tired all week long. Your transmission ain't work all week long. And you hope you glide in here so no one hears the sounds when you come in here. I declare to you right now, you need to put it in God's hands. You need to put it in the Holy Spirit's hands. We, we, we want to be living epistles. Stop. Stop trying. Stop working. Stop right now what you think you need to do. And, 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 and let the professional spirit do his job. This month or this quarter, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. Harold, could you come forward at this time? In understanding the work of the Holy Spirit, God has given us some Sabbath school lessons. <laughs> and in this word, in this word, he's going to sh show you in his study just a minute or two about the work of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me so far? <clears throat> so uh, in Sabbath school this morning, uh, one of the things that we talked about that stood out is we talked about how the, uh, the Holy Spirit is holy, yet it dwells in a sinful person. And we just talked about how, you know, God is love. And basically, you know, we kind of separate that from the Holy Spirit. Uh, but when our sin is like vomit, we try to paint, put an illustration on it, but our sin is like vomit. And God puts up with our vomit day after day after day after day and he still loves us through it and he's he just wants us to to obey and follow in his will and so we just really highlighted that that aspect of God is the Holy Spirit being an extension of his love putting up with our mess um we made it vomit because you know sometimes you just need a need a visual you know it's disgusting it's 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 filthy and to think that he dwells in us and we vomit and do our sin and we act like uh, Naeem said we act like our sin is iced tea and, and instead of the vomit that it is and, you know so I uh, really just recognize how we're grieving or causing God grief with our sin and recognizing it so that we can obey his will come on now come on now you better stop go sit down you better stop <laughs> Gordon Holy Spirit Holy Spirit uh, yeah, he, well, hold on. Do you hear him working? Yeah. Not me. Can I get next? <laughs> you know, we talked about today how sensitive the Holy Spirit is, and we oftentimes don't think about that. But when you think of grieving the Holy Spirit, I don't know if people fully understand what that means. So I'm going to give you an analogy. Go you go home to your wife, and you lie to her. Or you go home to your husband and you lie to him. Not a big lie. Nothing that's going to destroy your home or your marriage, but a lie. And they discover that you lied to them. Think about how they feel. They're grieved. So every sin that we commit grieves the Holy Spirit. But the one thing that's really enlightening for me, and I hope for you as well, no one went in the sound of the pastor's voice has blasphemed the Holy Spirit. No one, when in the sound of the pastor's voice, has blasphemed the Holy Spirit. You can cuss, you can, okay, cuss, I went south. You can curse Jesus. <laughs> you can curse the name of God. You can claim to be God. You still haven't blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Because that simply means, when you talk about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, is the refusal to accept, let me rephrase that, the persistent refusal to accept the invitation to repent. Now, persistent means enduring. It means stubborn. So the enduring refusal to accept the invitation to repent is the only unpardonable sin. Imagine how much God loves us that he would allow us to do all of the stuff that we do and still be willing to forgive us. Now, I want to hold on for a second. As you know, he's about to do around my, my mouth. 
It's important now that when you pray, you shut up. Because a lot of times when we pray, we start trying to fix it, work it, pastor, work it. And, and, and whenever I'm in his chair, you can't shape up your goatee and what have you and talk. You, you will, Bob, 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 yeah, Bob, stand for a second, Bob. No, well, I, well you, you're going to need a real shape up, right? No, no. But Bob, even if you're shaping up up here, you can't talk while you're doing it. Because what will happen if you talk? Say it again. It would be, oh, that's a better word. It'd be misaligned. Y'all better stop it. Y'all better stop it here. So when we pray, thank you, Bob. When we pray, we need to just wait and be quiet on the Lord. So, so I'm going to sit down and I'm going to be quiet so my mouth won't move. You can't even chew gum while you're doing that. Because as much as I'm Henry's pastor and I like to tell him what to do, <laughs> when I'm in that chair, I better listen. If I want to be aligned the right way. Devon, you ready? This morning we talking, we talked about grieving and resisting the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that jumped out in the lesson to me was how easy it is for us to do that in our sinful condition. One of the things that impressed me about the lesson is that God has given us this gift of the Holy Spirit. And he has given us the power to either yield to it mm -hmm. or resist it. And the thing that's so awesome to me is that as powerful as God is, he can speak the world into existence. He can speak worlds into existence just with his voice with all the power he has, we can render his power powerless if we resist his spirit. So as, as powerful as God is, if we don't choose to be receptive to the spirit of God and to receive the work that he wants to do on us, we take away his ability to be powerful in our lives just by resisting the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God, praise God. Now, I can't speak right now because my, he's still working on my mouth. I hope you didn't miss that. I can't speak right now, so he's working. So, pa Pastor Mitchell, uh, anything on the Holy Spirit? I'm sorry, I know I, you are not prompt, but you have to speak for some fools who can't. Well, uh, Pastor Graham said the Holy Spirit, but just stay with me. I'm going to kind of come full circle. In Water for the Thirsty, which is one of the reading plans that we use at Restoration Praise Center, and Matthew 6 was one of the readings. And in that passage of Scripture, there was talking about how to live by what you don't do. So I'm going to refer there real quick, and I'm going to come full circle to where Pastor Graham is. The Bible says in Matthew 6, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray public. What to do by what you should not do. Verse 16, and when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to miserably look miserable and disheveled. What to do by what not to do. Verse 19, don't store up treasures here on earth where moth or rust destroys them, where thieves break in. What to do by what not to do. God oftentimes wants to clarify to us what we should do by what we shouldn't do. And in this Bible here, he's saying, when you pray, when you fast, and then the opening text, it says, when you give, it's not about you. So connecting this back to the Holy Spirit, God is trying to have his way with us and through us, but if we could just understand that it's not about us, then we'll allow God to have his way. Stay with me. When it's about us, we want to do it how we want to do it. But when we understand that it's not about us, whatever God tells us to do, we'll do. Are you with me this morning? We have to yield, as Elder Irvin was saying, to the Holy Spirit. 
And when we yield, even when it's uncomfortable, we'll do it. Even when we're not going to get any credit, we'll do it. You see, we often get stuck because we want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be noticed. We all want to be loved. We all want to be affirmed, but at the end of the day, it's not about us getting the glory. It's about God getting the glory, but that means we have to yield to the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit have his way. And the Bible says that when Jesus is lifted up, then he'll draw. Let's be mindful that we want Jesus to be lifted up and we can watch him do the drawing and hence get the glory. Before we finish, come on, man. Before we finish this. <laughs> Before we finish this, sometimes when we get out of the chair, we come out of church, we come out of worship, we end up back in the world again. And sometimes when we do that, someone may say something to us, can you take this? And it may want to take the covering off. But if you notice, he's, he's wiping off the residue. He's wiping off the residue. In other words, if I just get up, <laughs> if I just get up and walk out, if I just get out of church and walk out and think that I'm clean just because I walked out or because I came here, then the work was not properly done. Each day, each day, there's got to be a, a sweeping. Come on, it's got to be a, a sweeping. You understand where I'm coming from? And that is the work of the Holy Spirit every single day. I declare to you right now that what you're seeing right now is someone who stopped trying to do everything on his own and now allow God to do it by the work of the Holy Spirit. You today represented the work of the Holy Spirit. He can see behind your head. He can see the spots you have lost. He can check on, just like when I walk out and my wife says to me, wait a second, you've missed a spot. I declare to you right now that every day without a walk with God, you're missing a spot. And without the Holy Spirit, we'll never know the spot that we're missing. But when you get the Holy Spirit, listen, when you get the Holy Spirit, there are four ways to keep the Holy Spirit. Number one, meditate on God's word. Come on. It will give us, wow, that's, that's, that's. It will, give us, it will give us strength in times of what? I'm going to also say weakness. I'm going to also say weakness. Meditate on God's word. Can you give me a, a, back, a background? Well, meditate on God's word. Number two, meditate on God's word will give us what? Focus on the love of the Trinity. I'm going to say the Trinity. I don't like the word Trinity. Because it ain't in the Bible. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. It's a very Catholic word. I ain't scared of y'all. Father, son, and whom? You can't just say there's a father without the son or the Holy Spirit. Number three, meditating on God's word will give us discernment of the will of God. Not your discernment, but come on, God's discernment. Number four, meditating on God's word will give us submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit. How can you do service without being submissive? You've got to be submissive. The reason why my house works is because I'm submissive. I ain't scared of none of y'all. I'm submissive. You want to be a real man? When she says go, go. Paul, climb the roof. I'm climbing the roof. Sweep the floor. I sweep the floor. I'm, su I'm submissive. Paul, take the kids to, 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 to school. Yes, ma'am. I take them to school. Paul, where's so I get it done. I'm submissive. Because when I call for worship, they better be submissive. Are oh, you understanding? But we have to be submissive to the Holy Spirit. That's how we work. That's how we do service. That's how things get done. That's how people see living epistles in us. God wants to see us walk like him and talk like him and live like him. But more than that, if you have not been living the way God wants us to live, maybe you've been in your own word. 
Your own television program, your own novel, your own book. Put up the last one. Put up the last one. I need you to know that when I came out of, listen, when I came out of this chair, I came out of this chair a new person. Come on, let me share this with you. Let me share this with you. I need you to know that I never go to the bar because I could do it myself. I'm telling you, I'll save some money. That's why. I, I'm just being real with you. Two Thursdays ago, <laughs> I went to Henry's Barbershop. I just went to stop by. Sometimes, women, you may never understand this. You will never understand this. But the barbershop is where we release. I don't know if Phil go because we, we have the same barber our, our, ourselves. <laughs> but I had time to kill two Thursdays ago. I said to Henry, Henry, can you cut me up? And I kind of looked at his face like, he was like, cut what up? He said, Pastor, sit down. I sat down in the chair and I looked at myself first. <laughs> at every barber shop or every salon, there's got to be a mirror. There's got to be a mirror because you want to see the before. Come on now. And, 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 and while I'm looking at myself, I'm seeing that I'm scruffy. My beard is a little bit long. I have hair at the side. And as I sat down there, he began to work. I don't know about you, but the way he worked, I was so calm in this chair that I fell asleep. Has anybody ever fell asleep while someone was doing your hair? Mm. But watch this. One of the reasons why you fell asleep is not because it just felt good, but because you trusted. And, I, and I'm telling you right now that part of the reason why we fall asleep or we ought to fall asleep in Jesus, being rested in Jesus, because we trust him with our mess. And I'm telling you right now that when I got up, listen, when I got up out of the chair, Henry turns me around and says, now look at yourself. <laughs> Man, I became so conceited. If anybody know me on Facebook, I took pictures. I sent one to my wife hoping that there will be another worship experience. I mean, you're newly married, you understand. You say, I know what you're talking about. But I declare to you that when I got up out of that seat, Uncle Wayne, when I got up out of the seat, let's look at that scripture, I felt like a new creature. Therefore, if anyone is in, who everybody? In Christ, he is a what everybody? The old has gone and the new has what everybody? I need you to know that I don't, I don't care how long you've been faking I don't care how long you've been carrying your own epistle. 